a couple of troopers laid prone on a ridge overlooking the capital city of the Goban Desert. The open flat terrain gave the distant star a perfect vantage to beat down all its heat on the troopers. They watched the city observing everything through their monoculars there was a large battle at the city. There was wreckage of tanks and other vehicles scattered about. The walls of the city were battered and large chunks had been blown out. The troopers searched carefully, taking their time and enjoying the time they got to lay down without their flak armor heating them up. You think we are being led into another bloodbath? One trooper spoke without moving his gaze. Ugh. Don't say bath. Emperor knows how long it's been. Corporal Hershen retorted. She was still recovering from her wound, but offered to scout. Cassin reluctantly agreed but she persisted saying that she'd be laying down anyway. The troopers had been out for nearly two hours watching for any sign of activity at all. There were plumes of smoke indicative of small fires all over the city. As far as they observed the city seemed to be in perfect working order. Apart from outside the walls, inside there was no damage at all. They tried to not let optimism get the better of them. But it was looking more and more like the city was conducting boostness as usual. I'm just saying. We've taken three towns in three days, been stationed in a fort for nearly six months with a daily attack, and have been fighting this war for almost six years. He looked away for a moment to jot down a note onto a pad of paper. Your point? Hershim grunted I want a fracking break. I mean, I've gone all of two days off Slee. Look, front gate about a hundred meters left. Is that what I think it is? The trooper adjusted his sights. Holy Emperor, I'll go let the captain know. The trooper jumped up and started running back to the command post all the officers were assembled and were discussing the battle tactics. All the officers of Beta Company were present as well. Cassin assumed the command of both companies, with the approval of the officers and co's filling the long vacant battalion CO position. They stood under a camo net that was propped up between two chimeras, enjoying what little shade it provided. The heat that emanated from the metal chassis of the chimeras negated any effect the shade had it'll be a hard fight, but we'll push through the middle. That damn river going through the city is too deep to ford. Vaz, I'm counting on your company being the spearhead. The scarred man nodded. Delta it going to roll up with armored support. Little Thunder will take out any emplacements. Captain. The sweat wrenched trooper stopped under the canopy enjoying the scant moments of shade. On his burnt face. We got clones. The trooper interjected. Everyone looked at the man with confusion what do you mean? Cassin spoke with an eyebrow raised imperial guard in the city. Looks like Kriegers. Cassin shot from the table. But his wound stopped him. He told Henris to go verify. The trooper and the armor clad officer walked off to go observe the city. After a painful walk across the flat and dry ground, they made it to the ridge. Corporal Hershin was writing down notes on her pad of paper. She kept her eyes glued to the city despite hearing the others approach her. Henris went prone beside her and picked up the monocular to try and find signs of allied forces you said you spotted Imperial Guard. Yes sir. About a minute or two ago they sent out a patrol. It's definitely Kriegers. Can't think of anyone else crazy enough to wear that gear in the desert. She chuckled elsewhere in the camp several most of the troopers were fighting a personal battle against the heat. Sergeant Golba's squad was replenished with replacements, some from Beta Company, and the old hands of his team were hazing the newcomers. Trooper Galveston was leaning up against the side of their chimera sweating profusely attempting to stay in the constantly shrinking shade no white shield. I said you need to get us some headlight fluid for the chimera. He was playing a prank on Trooper Miller. He was one of the replacements that came planet side a few weeks prior, along with the commissar. He was a young man, no more than 17. His blonde hair was still shaven from his time as a white shield. His exposed scalp burned under the powerful sun. He wiped the sweat from his forehead stinging him a bit trooper Galveston. I already checked with 5th platoon, they said they didn't have any. Miller spoke exhaustedly, then go talk to brother company's engineer platoon, we can't leave until the chimera is fixed. Trooper Miller sighed reluctantly and started hurrying off. Sergeant Golba came upon Galveston and shook his head as he leaned up against the chimera. He reached into his ruck hanging off the side of the machine and pulled out a ration bar. He played with the wrapper still shaking his head headlight fluid. You really are a scav. You know that right? Golba chuckled as he opened the ration and took a bite I know. But someone has to put these newbies in place. He said sarcastically. Besides we all went through it. Hell I remember when Harold was still a newbie on Tenor IV, and we got him to go up to the navy and ask for a hundred meter of flight line. Galveston looked up to reminisce on the event. The look on your face when he brought back some cabling was priceless yo. Golba took another bite of his tasteless bar. Still, don't frack with their heads. Relax, not all of them are dumb. Trooper Parvin has a good head on her shoulders, and Trooper Regs told me to sod off. 
He chuckled a bit both of those troopers were sitting on crates under a camo net. They were with a group of guardsmen that had been with Delta since the Aprilian war began. They were recounting many battles fought, or shenanigans they did while off duty. Each trooper tried to unoop the other's story. Some were obviously exaggerated, as if they were pretending to be catagens. It got around to trooper Parvin to tell her story. The newbie stuttered a bit trying to think of a story worth mentioning. I saw no starts once. The group groaned and one of them called her a liar. It's true. Back when I was still in primary training, our casa was hit by an enemy raid, and a nearby company came to fight them off. Before they got us into the shelter I saw one. I swear. She was met with the same reaction Corporal Gazner unscrewed the cap from his canteen and took a swig from the almost boiling water. He looked over at his friend, Trooper Harden. Both of them fought alongside Space Marines many years ago. Their platoon was commandeered by the Space Marines Force Commander for a mission. They were to act as a distraction while the Space Marines infiltrated a factory to remove a sorcerer. They never saw the mission, but they saw the giants at first they got the same reaction they gave the newbie. Ganza shot Harden a glance. They both nodded and Gazner unbuttoned his top to show off his badly scarred chest. Harden reached for his pack and pulled out a spent bolter casing. It was inscribed with high gothic that said function immunum starts. The group got silent, and Sergeant Tombin handed them the bottle of Amasic that was being wagered for Henry's trusted the troopers. But he had to see it with his own eyes, not for the captain's sake, but his sake. The thought of a moment of rest was nearly a foreign concept to him. He watched carefully until he spotted a sentry turn a corner on the wall becoming visible. He smiled briefly. Good work. I'm relieving you too. Go back and get something to drink. Henry stood up hanging the monoculars back to the trooper they started walking back after they packed up their gear. Her shin was carried on the trooper's back. The trooper didn't complain. She was providing him shade. Back at the camp they found a chimera to take cover beside. The inside of it was just as hot as the open ground. Henris approached the gathering of officers with a half-cocked grin on his face. Cassin immediately smiled. Henris' normally cold and logical demeanor meant if he was smiling. He had only good news looks like everyone's request for some leave came through. Cassin let out a sigh of relief the column of chimeras approached the city. The guardsmen inside raised an alarm. Several troopers ran out the gate and pointed their weapons at the approaching convoy. Cassin ordered the column to halt. The lead chimera stopped and immediately the masked men surrounded the chimera as the hatch opened. As the door touched the ground two troopers pointed their weapons in the cabin halt. Who goes there? The trooper's scream was muffled through his mask Captain Caleb Cassin, Delta Company, 2nd Battalion, 89th Cadian Heavy Infantry Regiment. I'd like to speak with your commanding officer right away. The troopers glanced at each other quickly, then one of them ran off. Other troopers were moving down the long column of Chimera ordering the hatches to be opened and interrogated the Cadians in a similar manner. After many ill words were spoken between the troopers, the trooper who ran off returned and nodded at the other masked man still pointing his weapon at the Cadians. Major George L says you can proceed. You'll halt your convoy on the near side of the river. We'll guide you in. True to their word, nearly a hundred Krieg troopers hailed on the convoy and directed them to a large paved road that ran perpendicular to the river that crossed the center of the city. The capital was completely different than the rest of the villages and towns the Cadians had been in. It was a thriving metropolitan area. The architecture was thought out construction rather than the clay hovels and shacks. The population was alive and active, cheering on the guardsmen as they entered the city. The troopers disembarked their vehicles to be greeted with a welcome sight of a city that wasn't destroyed. As well as many masked troopers still unsure if they should be pointing their weapons at the Cadians it was almost as if a heavy weight was lifted off of Cassin's shoulders. For a short time he didn't have to worry about seeing his comrades die, and could give his veterans a rest they so desperately needed. Though his battle-weary soldiers would find themselves in more trouble if a diligent watch wasn't kept over them. The tired captain exited the chill replacing a hand on the hot metal, providing balance as he wobbled on his injured limbs. Trooper Harold reached out for him but was waved off. A well-decorated man, along with his retinue approached the column. He had a runner search for the captain. He didn't know Cadian rank insignias and didn't want to appear to be a fool by introducing himself to an enlisted man. Once he found the man he was looking for, Cassian assumed the man was the Major and saluted casually. The Major's heels slammed together as he returned his salute, and dropped his arm just as crisply as it rose. Cassian noticed very quickly that many of the standards that he and his men neglected the Krieg took very seriously. I am Major Ulrich Georgiel, of the 517th Krieg, 5th and 6th Battalions. Pleased to meet you, Captain Cassin was it? This is a small force to be relieving us. 
The officer's voice came through just slightly more clear than the common trooper I'm sorry major, we aren't a reliving force, we are only here long enough to rest and recoup losses we've sustained, any help you can provide will be greatly appreciated, quite, my men will be saddened to hear that we are staying in this hell longer, nevertheless, we will help you out, if there's one thing we have, that's supplies. Cassian enjoyed the remark the major made about the peaceful city being hell. He'd heard many rumors about the death corpse attitude towards leave and downtime being perceived as a bad thing. They felt useless unless they were winning victory in the emperor's name. Though if the other rumors about them being religious fanatics were true, he might heave a few problems with his less than pious cadanes. Not to say they weren't devout, but their absence to religious services was rather noticeable. We've been separated from the rest of the 89th for a long time and we lack any long-range Vox equipment. I was hoping that your battalion maintained contact with your regimental command. We do, but the 517th has long forgotten us here. They are more worried about the men sleeping soundly in their trenches than us. The major waved his hand and an anonymous trooper dashed in front of him. The trooper's heels slammed together and he saluted. Cassin was still taken aback at the professionalism they displayed. The commissar, who was watching from a distance, also noticed the dichotomy of the regiments. He almost wished that the Cadians could act more like the Krieg. Their conduct in a battle was spectacular, but their blatant disregard for regulations was trying his patience. Major Georgiel mumbled something to the trooper and the faceless soldier nodded. Saluted then dashed away as quickly as he appeared I will have some of my command personnel assist yours in contacting your regimental command post. That is what you were getting at, weren't you captain? Cassin nodded at the man's words the commissar exited the chimera and straightened his greatcoat out over the flak armor he had been given. He approached the major. He was worried. He too had heard rumors about the Krieg. There were a few regiments that commissaris dreaded to be assigned to catechins in the death corps of Krieg. Though most of the deaths attributed with these tours was written off as accidental. He did his best to look stoic. As he was about to introduce himself the major interrupted him thank the emperor, lord commissar, I am in dire need of your assistance, my men are restless and picking fights, with you here I am sure you can whip my men back into shape, the commissar nodded, the officers held a few more parting words before the krieg departed, the commissar took Cassian aside as the rest of his battalion was disembarking. The commissar pointed out how well drilled the Krieg were, and then pointed out the slipshod behavior the Cadians showed. Already they could see problems arising as some of the troopers were growing annoyed with the Krieg's rigid ways. In an effort to nip a few issues in the bud the commissar proposed a plan both companies assembled in a nearby square. They were falling into company formation. Most of the troopers hadn't done so in almost a decade. They grumbled and complained as they formed up. The protocol was that the taller of the men were to be towards the front. And platoon commanders and officers were off to the side of the formations. When the cohorts were formed they were put at ease by the commissar civilians and Krieg alike were watching the event. The commissar's plan was to show off to the well-drilled Krieg that, though the 89th may appear sloppy to them they met the same standards the Krieg did, or at least that's what the commissar hoped to accomplish. Some of the Krieg commented on their constant fidgeting and formation, others didn't care and just kept up their patrol. The civilians were impressed at how well disciplined the Imperial Guard was. The Commissar spotted Cassian approaching and snapped to attention in a similar manner as the Major Battalion Tenshat. Immediately the Cadians snapped to attention. The square was filled with the thunder of hundreds of heel beats at once. They stood like frozen Pictobor displays until Cassian positioned himself in front of his battalion at ease. Men of the 89th, it's been a long and arduous journey to this point. We've fought countless battles and gained countless victories. We've gained glory for our emperor, and our brothers and aunts. We've lost friends, brothers, sisters. We watched as the enemy threw everything they had at us, and we have bested them. He paused. We've all come a long way since our beginnings. We come from different provinces of our distant world, to fight a war we understand little about. We fought alone unrecognized from our own, and we held the line. He took a deep breath. Everyone nearby was listening intently to his speech, even some of the Krieg. I have asked much from you, and you have given back tenfold. I have never doubted any of you, and for this I am honored to let you. So till further notice I am relieving you until such time that we are able to continue the fight. Have fun and relax, that's an order. Cassin nodded at the commissar. He once again snapped to attention battalion. Ten shot, to the last. Cassin barked, and the battalion replied in a powerful roar. For the rest, 
NFT was a battle cry exclusive to both companies. It came about from their separation from the rest of their regiment. The last orders the previous captain got from the regiment was do what you can. Both companies started saying the chant as a strike against the regiment that abandoned them. Even if they would be reintegrated into the regiment, they would almost act on their own. All command ever did was send them to their deaths. Cassin and Captain Delm before him led the company from defeat and managed to save the company every step of the way. They could just go back to their old command structure so easily with the final command from the commissar. The entire formation took a single step backwards then turned around sharply before dispersing in a very disorderly manner. Most of the troopers started cheering, discarding their gear and heading off for long yearned for time off the lines. Cassin walked towards the commissar as the other officers approached. That went better than expected. Well, I must say, I'm quite happy I managed to actually find this part, although I did get quite a bit of help. It was very difficult to track down because it is quite old and, like, you know, not everything is recorded, you know what I mean? And um, the further back you go on, like, you know, the internet, the harder it is to actually find stuff, and especially if it's multiple parts and all. So, like, I'm just happy we managed to find this because, like, you know, it would be a little shame to just leave it and then move ahead and then you wouldn't, like, you know, there's just, you don't really know what the fuck's going on. But, like, there's only one more part of this series to go, from what I know of. Maybe there might be more. Hopefully there might be. We never know. It just takes a lot more digging. But, like, I'm enjoying this story. Like, it was nice to get something a bit more serious. And, hey, I can't remember the last time I've had Death Corpse in any of my videos. I think I had Death Corpse once in the Penal Regiment video, but that was fucking ages ago, and they never even talked. And, like, you know, let's face it. Death Corps tend to be a bit of a, like, you know, a fan favourite for a lot of people. I myself actually have, like, a wee small, uh, um, school, uh, what do you call it? I, we, we, uh, oh, I can't even remember the formation. It's only a wee 500 point Death Corps army I've got, like, you know, but I, I really enjoy them and they were a lot of fun painting, so I, I like them. But anyway, um, as always, look, remember to hit that subscribe button, notification, all that shit, to stay up to speed. You know what I mean? Um, although I'd say most people that are at this point in this, let's face it, you probably already have, because there's no way you've watched, like, five, six videos all connected together and, like, you know, stayed up to speed. But, like, as always, hope you guys have enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. If you haven't already, check out my Redbubble portfolio. You might just find something you like. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This, this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back and it's way down heavy on me and it's not okay can you help a nigga out and just stop this please